is enough said. Happy Saturday, Heat Nation. Ernest here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. You guys know what I'm going to ask. Don't forget to smash the like button. Click that subscribe button. We are on the road to 4,000 subscribers. Thank you guys. Really appreciate the continued support. Now let's get ready to rock and roll on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Now it's June. First day of June. So I got something different for you guys today because I know recently we've been talking about a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation, a lot of Donovan Mitchell, Jimmy Butler, is a trade going to happen, is a trade not going to happen. I'm tired of talking about rumors, you guys, so I want to do something different. Now I told you guys last month, last week technically, <laughs> that I was going to do a new series for you this month and uh, we're going to start it today, first day of the month, so we're going to start it fresh. We got the NBA draft around the corner. The NBA draft's on uh, June 26th and June 27th, so it's towards the end of this month. So we're in draft mode, in my opinion. Then after the draft, we'll move on to free agency and trades. Now, of course, if something comes out, you know your boy's going to talk about it. Now, we may not be doing this every day. This may be a series I do maybe a couple times a week. It's really depending. Uh, but it might be a five, six part series, depending on how many players I want to talk about. Now I've given you some, uh, some names in the past, but what I want to do is I want to do individual videos on these particular players. And today we're going to start with someone who I feel in my opinion is probably the best option for the Miami heat. Now, before I get there, as you notice, you guys look at the jerseys, look who I got rocking on every player that you're looking at right here is a player that the Miami Heat either drafted or, for Duncan Robinson's case, picked up as a, uh, as a rookie and turned into a quality player. So the Miami Heat finds gems in the drafts, especially recently. And this guy, I feel, is going to be the best fit for the Miami Heat. It's a, it's a player that a lot of you have been talking about. Kel L. Ware from Indiana. Kel L. Ware, I feel, is the best prospect for the Miami Heat. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say Zach Eady is the better prospect. And some people may be right. Zach Eady was the better college player. Zach Eady averaged more points, more rebounds, more blocks. But I feel, you guys, the more that I look, the more that I research, Zach Eady is probably going to be the better college player. I think Kel L. Ware actually has the ceiling to be the better NBA player. Now, his numbers were just as great in college, you guys. Let's go over them really quick. He played 30 games. He played two seasons, broke out his sophomore year last year. Now, as we know, I'm um, not sure if you guys know this, Kel L. Ware, seven feet tall, 223 pounds. It's definitely a good size as an NBA center, especially in today's NBA. Uh, last season with Indiana, he averaged 16 points a game, 10 rebounds two blocks a game, 1.5 assists. Check out these numbers though. 58.6% from the field. 42.5% from the three-point line. This dude is a sniper from the three-point land. Now he does average only 63% from the free throw, so that is something he needs to work on. As we as we know, not every rookie is perfect. You come to the NBA and you, you know, you get developed. You get better. I feel this guy with this Miami Heat team can fit perfectly. Now, he averaged, you know, 0 0.6 steals a game, you know, but the dude is, is a pest on the defensive end. I like Kel L. Ware. And I know a lot of people are going to feel that Zach Eady is the better overall player. And Zach Eady may get drafted before Kel L. Ware. But we're not talking about who the better player is. We're talking about who fits better on this Miami Heat roster. Now, I will say that Zach Eady has impressed in the combine. He showed that even as a big man, seven foot four, he does have some versatility and speed. Uh, he showed that he can actually hit the three. But guys, Kel L. Ware is a speed center. He ran a 3.29 on the, on the, on the three-quarter court sprint. That's fast. I feel that next to Bam Adebayo, Kel L. Ware would fit better. Kel L. Ware is fast, he can hit the three-point shot, and he will allow Bam Adebayo to go back to his natural power forward position. 
And that's something that he fans have been clamoring for for a long time. Kel Elware is seven foot tall. You can start him next to Bam Adebayo, and it would work. If you draft a guy like Zach Eady, he may have to come off the bench. Because even though Bam has developed his three-point shot, he's not really known for it. So starting Zach Eady and Bam Adebayo, you're going to have to have like a slower offense. And the last time we saw a center like Zach Eady with the Miami Heat was Hassan Whiteside. And even though Hassan Whiteside had some good years in Miami, we noticed that towards the tailor end, 2018-2019, Spo was developing a different offense, especially with Bam Adebayo. And Hassan Whiteside was struggling with that. Kel L. Ware might fit better in Eric Spolstra's offense than Zach Eady. Because Zach Eady, you gotta, you got to play a slower-paced offense. Spo likes to play space and, uh, <laughs> space and pace offense you know he likes to play fast sometimes it's really depending on who's on the court so kel elware i feel plays better next to bam out of bio may be the better option next to bam now i may be wrong the miami heat are lacking in size we know that you get a guy like zach Eady. he is a guy that can rebound block shots score down low maybe that's what the miami heat needs but kel elware can too kel elware can score down in the paint he averages almost 60 percent from the field but he averages 42.5% from the three-point line. And in today's NBA, that's big. The dude averages 10 points a game, two block shots a game. So his, he has the defensive tenacity to play in this Miami Heat culture. If you ask me, if I had the 15th pick and both Kel L. Ware and Zach Eady were available, I'm drafting Kel L. Ware. So I want to hear from you, Heat fans. Today is part one. We're starting this first part series. Kel L. Ware, I feel like, is probably the best option for the Miami Heat to draft at 15th if he is available. Let me know in the comments if after everything I said, you guys, do you agree with me? Do you think Kel L. Ware is the best option? Or let me know what other player you feel is a better option for this Miami Heat team. This is a five to six part series, you guys. I'm going to be bringing up other players. We're going to be talking about multiple players, but you know how this Miami Heat team is, you guys. When we drafted Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero, there were other players on the board that I'm sure Heat fans thought were a better option. But by picking up those guys and picking up a Jaime Jaquez as well last year, we saw that they fitted better with this Miami Heat team. So obviously they know a lot better than we do, but hell, let's talk about it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think, you guys. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We on the road to 4,000 subscribers. Really appreciate you guys' support. Enjoy your Saturday. Have fun, you guys. And that is enough said. Enjoy.